Hello again, beautiful artists, and welcome back to another episode of Paint Along with Sky. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Sky, and I post beginning level acrylic painting tutorials here on YouTube every Saturday. So make sure to hit subscribe so you can join the fun and paint along. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified when I post a new video. All right, this week we're doing something fun and sort of quirky that hopefully you guys will like as well. Uh, I've always wanted to do a sort of alien abduction painting, and so I was inspired this week uh, in this sort of in-between winter time when we're in between holidays uh, to do this fun and quirky alien abduction painting with some tree silhouettes. Gonna walk you guys through this every step of the way, just as usual. We have our four brushes that we use for most classes today as well. This is a kit that comes with four brushes and it comes with the ones that are really close to the sizes that I enjoy using. Your brushes don't have to be exactly the same, but they should be about the same kind of sizes. So this is a three quarter inch wash brush and then I have three pointed brushes, one which I'll refer to as the medium sized brush, which is a size 10, and then two small detail brushes in a size three and a size three over zero. I'm gonna get those in my water cup off the side of the screen. Today we're also gonna use a ruler for our little alien abduction ray. And then the colors that we're going to start off with for today's background step, keeping it really simple today to start with just some white, yellow, and some phthalo green. To see a full materials list of everything that you need to paint along, check the description box below. There's a link to a materials page on my website that will show you everything that you need to paint along. All right, let's go ahead and jump on in. All right, I'm gonna grab my largest brush here and a little bit of water, and I'm going to mix up a light yellow just some yellow and white. I'm going to take this yellow color right across just the very top part of my canvas. I'm going to bring that color a little bit further down. Then we're gonna start adding green. Really simple gradation today from a yellow green to more of a true green. So I'm just gonna sneak a little bit of my green in here and you can see how quickly that will change the color. And then I'm going to take this gorgeous yellow green color right underneath, very limey, like it, delicious. I'm going to bring that lime color up into that yellow white mixture. And then I'm going to add little bits of green as I work my way down the canvas creating, again, this gradation from yellow-green. It's okay to bring some green all the way up into the yellow. We don't want too much yellow because that's going to be our uh, beam color later, the light yellow. So we wanna have the contrast a bit against the green. Yeah, I'm rinsing my brush a little bit to mix up a little bit of now a darker version of that color. I love phthalo green because if you add white, it turns a really gorgeous aqua color, which is my favorite color. One of my favorites. It's hard to pick favorites with colors, but it's also very versatile if you want to add a little bit of yellow to it. It becomes a beautiful kind of more grassy true green. So simple. Now I'm going to take this slightly darker yellow green, same idea right next to the lighter version and don't be shy we don't want strips of color we want to blend be brave and blend into the color before it you just kind of bring that color up there keep your hand going back and forth off the canvas all the way across really good dexterity practice okay one more slight shade darker I'm going to bring this down all the way so that if we have any peekaboo through our trees, later we'll see that green background. And we will just very satisfyingly finish off the gradation all the way down. All right. I 
nice and consistent gradation, very pretty. A little bit eerie, our sky colors today, of course, for the setting of our alien abduction. I think I'm going to add a little bit more green into my yellow. And that is a matter of preference. Like I said, later we're going to have our light yellow beam. So I want to make sure that I have that contrast. So I'm just bringing a little bit more green up here into my yellow. So just have a little bit more of that green tint. A little bit more subtle, but still noticeable color change. Of course, the more you blend, the more everything is going to sort of look even. All right, and then once you've reached a good point and you're happy, closer, as happy as you can be, <laughs> uh, you get as close enough to perfection as you can with your gradation. There's no such thing as true perfection, so don't worry too much about it. But we're going to step away and we're going to let this dry for a few minutes and we'll come back and we'll add all of our wonderful uh, foreground elements. All right, I'll see everyone in a few. Okay, welcome back artists. We have a completely dry background. I've got my ruler on hand for the next part. And then on my palette paper, I just have some more yellow and some black and white. Really simple with the color scheme today. I rinsed my brushes and got some fresh water at break as well. Let's go ahead and jump right back on into things. And we're gonna kind of work from the top down again. So I'm gonna start with my actual little flying saucer friend, and then we'll do our little ray right after. So let's start by blocking things out with white. And I'm going to use my ruler for the little ray. But you can sit right there for now. And we're gonna start with the top dome part of our little UFO. So I'm just gonna do a little upside down U to start, that's the little dome where the little alien friends would be, uh, presumably. And I'm starting with white, making it pretty simple to adjust things. I'm going to then do a curved line there on the bottom and I'm gonna come down maybe about three quarters of an inch or so. And I'm gonna do a little dot just to show you guys. And then matching the same sort of curve as you have up here, we're gonna do the bottom part of the actual disc shaped aircraft here. Like so. And we're gonna bring it out to eventually touch a straight line from the corner there of our little dome that comes out. And that's gonna be really simple, basic flying saucer shape. I tried a few and this was definitely the easiest shape that we can make, I think, for our UFO shape. And then I'm going to fill that in with gray too. But in fact, let me start instead with uh, tracing out our beam as well. Also with this white before we fill in. And we just kind of want to find the center line there of our UFO. Okay, so that's maybe about the center there. That center line is going to come all the way down meet the bottom and then what I'm going to do down here so I'm just going to find an inch on my ruler so I see our, so here I have my six inch mark and then I'm going to go I think probably like an inch and a half out either way and then we'll have our little triangle bases and then we're just going to connect the dots and rather than connecting to that exact dot, I'm gonna go a little bit further to the right and connect the dots like so. Trying not to smudge too much, but we are gonna cover this in just a second. So again, going out a little bit further from that center dot, 
so that we have a funnel shape rather than a triangle. Okay, now you can take a few passes to adjust this, and that's okay. All right, and then we're going to fill that in first with a little bit of yellow mixed with white. Okay, so just a nice, clean, sunny yellow. And we may end up needing to do multiple coats because this yellow color does not have very good coverage power. And you wanna cover your sketch lines with your yellow color. We're gonna fill in our UFO friend here in just a minute too, but we're gonna start with this beam so that it's dry in time to add our trees and our little silhouette of the friend being abducted. And just keeping those brush strokes going up and down in the direction of the shape. It's always good to get your brush strokes going in the direction of the shape. Every single little brush stroke matters in the painting at the end. It's all some of its parts. All right, tidy brush strokes in that same direction. We could use our slightly larger brush for this as well, but I feel really good with this size brush. Covering that white sketch line, adjusting the shape as needed. However you like it to be, it can be a little bit wider. The bottom doesn't need to be the exact same triangular type shape as mine but this is the general idea. Keep that in mind too, whenever you're painting along with me or anybody else, that your painting is unique. It's always gonna look a little different than the model and that is okay. And that's not something that you need to work on. That's your style. That's something actually that you would want to develop and lean into. Okay, it's not a photocopy competition. It's hand-painted art. All right, and I can see like a little bit of green, which is not the end of the world, since this would presumably perhaps be a sort of translucent light. Transparent. But I think I want it to be a little bit more solid, so I'm gonna give that a minute to dry, and then I may do a second coat on it. Let me just correct this real quick. Don't want to pull any black into it. I'm only using three colors and yet somehow I'm still making a mess of my palette. <laughs> Always seems to happen. All right, nice clean straight line as much as possible. And then we'll go up to our UFO and fill in the spaceship. So I've rinsed my brush and this is going to be really simple. I'm just going to fill this in with different shades of gray. So black and white together. I'm going to start with a sort of medium gray. Not too dark, not too light. Like a pencil color perhaps. And this is going to be this main part. And same idea with our beam. And with always, we're going to cover our sketch lines, which we're sketching with paint. We sketched with paint with our white. So we're covering up those sketch lines and making everything nice and clean as much as possible within this small little shape. And we're keeping our brush strokes going the direction of this shape as well. All right, take your time. This is our main focal point of the painting. Adjust the shape if you need to. 
And then I'm going to take a lighter gray for my top dome. Still gray, you don't want to go white. So we're going to add some highlights. We want that to show up. So still gray, not too light. Filling that little shape in with that top gray. And then I'm gonna take that same gray in the top there, this lighter gray, and I'm gonna do a quick little line here at the bottom as well. So that we have a different color gray. It's like a different part of the craft where the lights are gonna be. Later, added. Things are a little bit wet, so they might not have as much contrast as you want. But for now, we're just gonna kind of block out those shapes and fill in those main colors. And then we're gonna come back and add our little final details in that area later. Let's now see if we can add another coat to our yellow. Things drive very quickly where I am because I live in the Southwest, American Southwest. Um, but I used to live in the Pacific Northwest, which is the Southwest is very dry and sort of deserty, also mountainous. The Pacific Northwest is very wet rainforest land. So sometimes things here take five minutes to dry that would have taken 25 back in Oregon. So that really depends on your climate as well. In Oregon, I did use to pull a blow dryer out sometimes when I was really impatient because <laughs> it would just not dry. Here things dry very quickly. Maybe that's why artists partially enjoy the desert because <laughs> our paint dries. Saves time. Okay, that did work. That was dry enough to add another coat. So now I'm gonna go in with some black and I'm gonna work on my little tree line at the bottom. And the trees are gonna go through my yellow, uh, which hopefully the black is dark enough to cover. So we don't wanna blend our colors there into a sort of muddy gray. And I'm gonna start over in my green so that that just has a second to dry. And the way that I do these trees is I start with just a line straight up and down using black, still my second to smallest detail brush, a little bit of water blended into my paint. And I start with a straight line and then from the top, I'm gonna to kind of flick my wrist with my brush I come from the top down and I tend to always make them sort of too bare up top. So what I like to do is add a little bit, Ooh, a little too much water there. You want to get those little flicks of the wrist. So too bare up here, so I'm going to add a few more. And you can kind of adjust, that's a pretty tall skinny tree. So maybe we make them a little bit fatter at the base. Like so. And we're going to add quite a few of these all the way across the bottom part of our canvas. A little bit time consuming, but we're not in a hurry today. It's a beautiful winter day. Where I live, where I live has extreme summer climates, but in the winter right now it is sunshiny and there's a nice breeze. Sometimes we get a tiny sprinkle of snow. It's not hot at all. It's like in the fifties and it's so nice, but I pay for it in July. <laughs> if I had the money to snowbird or in reverse, I would do that. And maybe one day I will. Always needing to add a little bit more to the tops of my trees. And we kind of want it to 
meet together at the bottom to create a solid black forest base. Okay, so they're bumping into each other there and it gets pretty solid black. But then you wanna see a lot of those great brush stroke flicks. throughout your trees. Looking pretty cute. You can really go however you like with this uh, and add them right to left or kind of just build your forest however you like. All right, and this is again, sort of a time consuming step we saved time with our background today. That was a really simple background, but we've got work to do in our foregrounds, so. Keeping your brush rolling there in the paint can help it come to a nice point. This is also very good dexterity practice. And I'm almost to my beam. And that should be a nice contrast with the black against the yellow. And my yellow does look almost dry already. I also paint with a little bit of water, which helps thin the paint. So thinner paint takes less time to dry. Sometimes people think that it would be the other way around, that if you added water to the paint, it would help keep it wet because water is wet, right? <laughs> you would think, but that's not true. With acrylic paint, at least, uh, you add water to thin the paint and then a thinner layer of paint takes quicker to dry, less time. So if you use a lot of paint, yeah, that's okay too. That's again, like just your style. Very versatile medium. You can use a lot of paint or some water. And you can even water down acrylics as much as you would watercolor and use it like watercolor too on paper. It's still a little heavier bodied than watercolor is. And I am getting a little bit of yellow blending into my black, but the black has so much coverage power compared to the yellow that you can't really notice it. I can just blend it away all into the black. You can always give it another coat later if you need to as well. You're never truly ruined with acrylic. If you do something you don't like, it's very easy to come back and adjust things with a second layer. Sometimes I will radically change paintings by covering a portion with white. And then you just come right back over it like you were working on canvas. It does make it a little bit stickier eventually though, but still not impossible and not wrong. Remember there is no real right and wrong with art. Anyway, don't take it too seriously. Like I know sometimes we have a tendency to do if you are painting along today, I love to see everyone's work. And I've created a Facebook group called the Art Club that is specifically designed for my students to share their work with me and other people that are painting along. And there's a link in the description box below to join that as well over on Facebook. 
you're on Facebook, I want to see your art. And it doesn't have to be only the paintings from my classes. Anything that you got going on, I want to see it. Which is truly the best part of my day to see people enjoying painting along with me though. <laughs> it's really cool to see all the places that these classes have made it all over the world, all different places like schools, retirement homes, health facilities, all sorts of things. Painting is very healing. And it's a universal language too, art and painting. And if you're here as a beginner, just know that I'm so pleased. I'm happy you're here and happy that I can hold your hand here at the beginning of your art journey. It's truly a blessing to be able to do that for everybody. So thank you for being here and thank you for posting your art too. I know that can be sometimes scary very supportive group over in the art club. So some of these trees I've left a little extra space, but sometimes I do want them to touch and form like this dense black base. Okay, and we're almost finished with our trees. Not too much more. I wanted this to capture sort of like the idea that this person was camping in the woods and got abducted, which is terrifying. I like to solo travel. I tend to not, uh, not really a tent camper though. <laughs> but I like to be in perhaps a little cabin if I could wooden structure, really prefer it, or, you know, adobe here. Adobe is probably even better. All kinds of things in the forest. UFOs, you wouldn't even have thought to be concerned about. Don't let that discourage you from going camping, though. And who knows, maybe this guy has an adventure in front of him. Take him on a little journey. Okay, I think I probably have just space for one more tree. Some of them are taller than the others. I'm gonna vary the sizes just like the forest would have varied sizes of trees. I'll make a little shorty guy over here for my last in a row. It's looking pretty cute. Okay. And I feel like it's a little thin right here, so I'm actually gonna add another little guy right there just to thicken up the forest a little bit. Pretty cute. I actually like that. I'm gonna thicken up. Mm, that looks pretty balanced. Thicken up the forest a little bit over here too, but not with another tree, just with a little bit of black. All right. Looking cute. Okay, and the time it took for us to add our trees, now our disc is dry enough for, add, for us to add our second coat of colors on there. Okay, so I'll grab some more of my light gray first. 
right up here to just adjust this little gray portion. Now that the paint is a little drier, mostly dry. Adjusting my shape and just kind of perfecting things a little bit. Great, and then I'm going to outline the whole thing with black. Going for that sort of cartoon style today. So I'm gonna do that black outlining. We're just essentially going over that same sketch that we started with today. Pretty simple. So I'm sort of outlining that top area. And just going along the outside edges. Going along the bottom. Okay. And I'm also going to outline that little segment. Okay, and you can adjust if you need to with gray again and make any line more narrow. If you got a little heavy handed anywhere, but mine looks okay. I'm gonna grab some white now for my little highlights. And I'm going to start by highlighting up here this dome. I'm gonna do a little sort of triangular shape first. And then two more additional little tiny brush strokes to get a little circular feel there. Then I'm going to highlight the disc part. I'm just going to kind of go along the main shapes that I have. And then let's use actually the back of our brush for the lights. And that makes a really simple circular shape. It's much easier to do it this way, I think, than using the front of your brush. You can try to use the front of your brush if you'd like to and see which way you prefer. I kind of like the tactile look of using the back of my brush for dots as well. Painting is not just about the colors. It can be about the shadows of the brush strokes I actually cast upon the paint as well. Okay, so that part's done. Our piece de la resistance is of course our little friend who is getting abducted. So this is going to be a handy time to bring in our teeny tiny brush. And I recommend probably practicing this shape uh, once or even twice on like your paper, if you have paper down for your table like I do, or even on your little piece of palette paper or on a paper plate or wherever you can, sketchbook uh, too. Uh, it's a little bit tricky to do the human form, which is why I often avoid it <laughs> in my classes, but we're gonna try because it just looks cuter, I think, uh, than it abducting anything else and kind of more fun. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with his head shape. I'm gonna go right over my trees centered here. I'm gonna start with a little oval for his head. And then I'm gonna push the front part out just a little bit for like a chin area. And then I'm gonna actually do a tiny little hairdo <laughs> on top. I know that's really, really, really tiny, but it really makes a difference. And then I'm gonna bring his neck down a little bit and then I'm going to do a rectangle for the body. Stay with me. And then this front shoulder is going to have one arm coming out like that. Kind of thicken that neck a little bit. And then one arm 
coming out from there. And then legs, I'm gonna have one kind of coming down. And then I would have a bend for the knee. And then the back leg, also a similar bend. I sort of have a basic human shape there. So the back leg is gonna be smaller. His head looks like a hat. Which, I mean, you could be wearing a hat, I suppose. And then feet sort of dangling. There at the bottom. With also little ovals for his hands, sort of. It's very, very, very tiny. Okay. I like it except for his head. Head looks weird. So what I'm going to do is gonna rinse that brush, teeny tiny little brush. I'm gonna grab some light yellow to make his head look smaller with that color. Wow, and you can see just a little adjustment there makes a world of difference. Very, very tiny little adjustment there. Huge difference. Gonna take a little bit of that light yellow. I'm gonna add a few highlights sort of on his body and on his legs. This is like the tiniest little highlights ever as he's sort of trapped in that beam. Like a single bristle for <laughs> this size. It's very challenging. You could add something else getting abducted, but I think the human form is just iconic here, so we went with that. Okay, but I think that actually looks pretty good. Don't overwork it. If you have a somewhat human looking shape, just call it good and go with it. All right, and that is actually all the instruction that I have for this week's fairly straightforward painting. Took us a little minute there with all of our details. Um, but let me know what you thought of this week's painting. I know it's a little bit more quirky and unconventional, uh, which is actually very my style. Uh, let me know if you guys like this as well and I'll do more things like this. Don't forget to subscribe and join me over in the Art Club. Can't wait to see your masterpieces. And that is all the instruction that I have for us this week. So until next time, happy painting and stay creative.